Everybody close your eyes. Now you can smirk and you can laugh this off and you can tell yourself, that dude right there, he didn't get to me. Oh, I would to God that I had that ability to get to you, but there's someone far more powerful, the Holy Spirit. Mario, at night, when no one's around, in the last moments of being awake before I go to sleep, my life feels very painful. I look at it, and I remember days when things made sense, and now they don't anymore. Sometimes I snap at the very people that I should love the most, and I'm cruel, and I'm out of control. Sometimes I'm so full of pain from the days that used to make sense that I miss. And I look at tomorrow and I have taught myself that the best thing I can do is to become hard and don't feel anymore. The man in the tombs ran to the feet of Jesus and the demons talked through him. Why are you here, son of man, son of God? Are you here to torture us before the time of judgment? And Jesus said, what is your name? He said, Legion, for we are many. Then he cast out 3,000 devils. And the man woke up in a condition that never in his wildest hope he ever thought he would feel again. His mind worked right. His feelings were normal. He could join the human race again. I've watched people converted that were shot callers for gangs. They never ever believed. They would ever stop thinking of themselves as a cruel, hardened, callous killer. And they became the most tender and attentive husbands and fathers because of the blood of Christ. I have watched cynical, and I've seen in the eyes of business community, and I've met some of the wealthiest people in the world. I have. I've sat with them. And I look at them, and they have a hardness, a callousness, a deep pain that they have learned to coat with this arrogance and this conviction that no matter what, they're going to make the next dollar, they're going to make the next invention. And they, they make it seem to everyone else they have it together. And you have no idea the hell that they live in. I'm going to talk to you and I'm done with these few sentences. Loneliness, when you're with a group. Sadness, during a celebration. Confusion, when you're in the midst of your job. We live in a frightening state. We live in a frightening place. A terrifying minefield, where all of a sudden we wonder, why did that man explode and go shoot up all of his fellow workers? Or what got into that kid to get a gun and go down to a school and kill children? And we want to blame the gun. And we want to blame the chemical. And nobody wants to see it for what it is. Now what I'm going to promise you is this. The Spirit of God will come upon you tonight the Holy Spirit of God will come upon you tonight and joy will come back and forgiveness will come back and sanity will come back and peace of mind will come back and you will, you will look forward to the day where you think decent thoughts and gratitude returns and the ability to love and forgive and to heal 
and to get rid of all of these things. At the very beginning of this message, I told you about a woman that was healed of paralysis and agonizing pain in her spine, and she got up out of a wheelchair. You're going to get out of an invisible wheelchair. You're going to get out of a handicapped state that is unlike anything you could imagine. Bow your heads, as I said a moment ago. Mario, do you really believe that I can know peace and joy and gladness and power over habits and new life? Do you really believe that? I've seen it in hundreds of thousands of lives all over the world. I've seen the one, the, the young girl that didn't want to live another day get such a will to live that every day became an exciting moment of anticipation. Now here's what the Word of God says. The life of Christ enters those who repent of their sin, acknowledge their condition before God. I need you. I need you. You are what I need. Number two, it says to believe. You already believe things. This is what you need to believe. That Christ died for you on the cross. And that three days later, he rose from the dead. You need to believe that. Because if you believe that, then the most powerful ingredient in the universe, the power of Christ's blood, forgive and wash you clean, comes in. Mara, you don't know, I've been jilted. I've been ripped off. I've been used. I've been abused. I've been hurt. I can't get over it. Give Christ this moment. Give him your depression. Give him your loneliness. Give him your fear. And you will never regret it. And you will be stunned by how completely the Lord will turn your life around. Now, with nobody waiting and everybody's eyes closed, you might say, Mario, I don't believe. I want to, but I'm struggling to have faith. Well, here's what I believe. There's power in agreement. There's power when you and someone else pray together. The Bible says it in Matthew 18, verse 19 and 20. If any two of you shall agree as touching anything on earth, it will be done. Maybe you can't imagine the change in your life. But if you let me pray with you together in agreement, that miracle will come. I'm telling you that miracle will come. If you are here and you'll say, Mario, I need a new life. I need a new life. I need a miracle in my emotions that only being born again can give me, that only being given a new life will ever work. Pray for me, Mario. Pray with me that Jesus will make me a new creation tonight. If that's what you want and you'll let me pray with you, put your hand in the air right now. Do it wherever you are. Say, Mara, I would have put my hand up, but I don't want people to think I'm a drug addict. Listen to me. If you raise your hand, no one is going to speculate why your hand is up. This crowd is going to do nothing but congratulate you for making the best choice of your life. They don't care about that. Now, I'm going to try one more time. If you would like a new life, and to get rid of your fear, your loneliness, your depression. And you'll let me pray with you about it. Put your hand in the air right now. Do it right now. And now stand to your feet if your hand is raised. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up over there. Outside.
Tonight I feel a very deep yearning. And I want you to remain standing for just a moment. If you brought someone with you tonight specifically to hear the gospel, then I want you to lean over to them and gently say, would you stand for Christ and that miracle if I stand with you? Just ask them once. Don't push it. Just ask them once. Would you stand? And if someone asks you to stand, they're not judging you. They're loving you. So get up on your feet right now. If you're here, someone has asked you to stand. Go ahead and stand. With, listen, I'll stand with you. I'll stand up with you. That works. That's the love of God. Now, it's spreading. It's spreading. Power of Christ. Now, all of you, all of you that are on your feet, find the nearest aisle. Come to Christ right now. Get ready for a miracle. Get ready for a miracle. Come up here right now. Come from all over. Get ready for a miracle. Turn this way so I can see you. I want to see you. Turn, turn this way so I can see you. I, okay, I know. I got you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming over here. How many of you believe that something wonderful is happening in this tent. Put your hand over your heart. You know what should give you the greatest faith right now and you hear me this is going to give you faith God knows exactly how you feel that's why Jesus became a man and for 33 years suffered every part of the human experience you know how I feel You've seen me cry alone. You've witnessed every mistake I've ever made and every cruel thing that was ever done to me. Now, secondly, you love me more than anyone else loves me. Here's an amazing thought. You have more power than anyone in the universe. Jesus, you have more power than anyone. You could raise Lazarus from the dead. You can raise my broken heart and my broken mind and my broken life. Think of this. The person who loves me the most also has the most power. That will take a lifetime to absorb. So I want you to say this out loud. I want you to surrender to Christ. I don't want you to give him part of you. I remember when the accident in Chernobyl happened and some of the workers that were exposed to radioactive water were being sprayed and having it cleaned off of them. And I was astonished at how fiercely they surrendered to the solution that was cleaning the radiation off of them. That's how you should repent. All of it. All of it. Not some of it. All of it. Say this out loud. Church, join in just for their sake. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I'm, broken. I'm broken. I can't heal. I can't heal. Life. 
is more painful than I can bear. I know now that's why you died on the cross. To take the penalty for the curse that is on my life. You've asked me tonight to become your servant, your child, a Christian, a real one, not a hypocrite. And that's what I want. More than life, I want Jesus. More than any feeling, I want Jesus. Because if I have Jesus, all the right feelings will come. Wash away my sin. Set me free. Make me whole. Let me know new days of peace and joy. I know you rose from the dead because I feel your power. In Jesus' name, amen.